Uh, good evening. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being so gracious and generous to share your time with me. And I am delighted to be here. Uh, again, thank you very much, uh, Professor Veer, for that wonderful introduction. And I am most grateful to you. Uh, I'm going to spend the next 45 minutes to an hour speaking to you about ozone, air pollution, specifically in North Carolina. And if you haven't recognized this slide, this is really the city of Charlotte in the background with a haze hanging around it. And that's what it is meant to imply. But we, this, through all the science that has been done over the years, we are making good progress in improving the air quality. But it is not there yet. So I want to share that with you today. The way this will go is I'll give you a sense of what the different kinds of pollution the state of North Carolina faces. How is ozone formed in the atmosphere? Give you a sense of that, simplistically as possible. And then work you through the ozone problem in the state of North Carolina. And end by a little bit about the research that we have been doing and say, share some of those results and conclude by some concluding remarks. So that's, in essence, is what I will try to do. And no doubt, there'll be time at the end to ask me questions. And if I have not satisfied you by the end of the day, my website is provided right there. <laughs> You're welcome to connect with me, and I'd be happy to communicate with you. So the ozone problem in North Carolina. Uh, what I will try to do first is, North Carolina is somewhat of a unique state. There is no one single air pollution problem that is pervasive in the entire state of North Carolina. In fact, in my judgment, and that is purely my judgment, there are three distinct problems that we have to deal with in the state of North Carolina. So here is North Carolina right there. And if I can break or division the state of North Carolina in the mountainous region, the western part, the Piedmont region in the middle, which is where we are right now, and the eastern part of the state of North Carolina. What is it that we see? The western part is primarily gets impacted by long range transport of pollution, primarily from Ohio River Valley and TVA. So pollutants waft aloft, come to the state of North Carolina, and they impact. And one of the manifestations of that pollution is the Blue Ridge Mountains, the wonderful vistas that we had at one time, are no longer blue anymore. They are getting grayer, and perhaps in certain areas even worse than that. So that's western part of the state. That's what we have to deal with. In the eastern part of the state, it is intensively managed agriculture and the pollution associated with intensively managed agriculture. And what is it that I mean by that? The state of North Carolina is home to 10 million hogs. Clearly, the waste that is generated by these hogs, by the technology that is used to manage the waste, is simply inadequate, and there is a lot of air pollution associated with it. And that's largely in the state, eastern part of the state. How about the Piedmont? The Piedmont region, is, which is where we are at, is where the ozone problem is. And there is another one, which is particulate matter, fine, but I'm not going to go there today. It is really automotive issues and the pollution associated with automotive traffic and what ultimately these pollutants that are produced by automotive industry 
is what is causing the ozone problem in the central part of North Carolina. And so I will focus essentially in the issues surrounding this part, which is the central part, Piedmont region of the state of North Carolina. So that you know that indeed there is a long range transport. There is something called back trajectory analysis. That is, we can, after the fact, scientifically figure out where did the air mass originate when it came to western part of North Carolina. So on this particular day, which is July 12, 1995, you can see that western part of the state of North Carolina was impacted by this air mass. And so full one third of the time in the western part of the state of North Carolina, long range transport is an issue. Now, ozone resides in two distinct regions of the atmosphere. There is ozone, this is the surface of, this is planet Earth. Ozone resides near the surface of the Earth, which is also called the troposphere. However, there is a very large pool of ozone that resides 25 to 50 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and that is called the stratosphere. Ozone that resides in the stratosphere is good for humankind. Ozone that resides near the surface of the Earth, that is in the lower troposphere, is bad for us. And I'll explain that in just a bit. Paradoxically, and this is the great paradox, ozone in the stratosphere is decreasing, and ozone in the troposphere is, is increasing. 